Hi, this is Kevin the Miller here. I appreciate you watching the channel. So I wanted to do a longer demonstration on how my auto feed system works on my mill. So first things first, you have to have power. So what I did is I mounted a battery over on this side of the mill head. That travels down the track with me. Um, I've got a trickle charger inside the power box here. So at the end of the day, if I've got power nearby, all I have to do is plug it in, charges the battery back up. If you're not near power, of course, you gotta pull the battery out and bring it home. Uh, but the reason that I have the battery is, is obviously for the auto drive, but also I've got the power lift system on here. I've got to power the system on. I got tired of cranking that thing up and down. I've got some issues with my shoulder. In fact, I just had surgery seven weeks ago. So um, that helps out really well. It moves at a pretty good clip. Uh, that is just a uh, ultra tow system for on a trailer or a camper. I just welded some brackets on there and that, that works out really well for me. It's fast enough. Uh, but just to show you a little bit about how this system works, the drive unit that I used is out of a Jazzy scooter. So I've got a chain system on here. That's one of the motors. Those Jazzy scooters come with two. Uh, the batteries were dead on the on the Jazzy scooter that I used, so it was junk basically. But the motors are good. The, those motors are very strong. There's a lot of torque there. One of the things that I also like about it is I can still push this mill head without the the power manually up and down the track. There is some resistance because of this, obviously, um, which is kind of nice when you're parking it and you don't have to put a parking brake or a block in the way or something like that. Uh, you don't have to worry about the, the wind grabbing it. Typically, if I do want to park this thing overnight, I left the parking brake on here. You cannot move that mill head now. So I don't need to put anything on here to keep this mill head from going down the track just because of the wind with that parking brake on. So I left that on there. But basically the chain runs from one end to the other. I don't know if you can see this okay, but there's two slave pulleys in there to keep that chain nice and taut. Chain goes underneath that pulley, up around, and then underneath this pulley. So let me show you on the other side here what that looks like then. So what I did is on my trailer, and I custom made a trailer, I basically put these uh, vertical risers in here. I've got a, uh, a turnbuckle in there so I can tighten or loosen that chain. And then I've got, uh, I think that's 40 count or whatever you call that, uh, chain running all the way down to the other end. I put two stoppers on here. I'll show you how those work in a second, but that way I don't even have to monitor the mill. I can just let the thing work on its own. So there's a stopper on each side. So it'll stop when it gets to the end on its own, uh, on either end, forward or backward. And then I also have an electric throttle on here. So what I do is, with the, with the power on on this thing, um, I turn that off. This is my electric throttle. So when I hit that, that's this unit here. I, I mo uh, modified the bracket, pulls this cable, pulls that enough that it also turns on the lube. Um, I can let this thing run down the track on its own. I can stack wood while it's running down the track. When it gets to the end, let me show you what the other side of this looks like. The chain comes down here, just the same as the other side. That stopper to stop the drive system hits this. And then this is an adjustable bolt that I have on here. Sorry if this is shaky, I'm kind of a one-man show here and I'm not that great at video, but I'm doing my best. So that bolt hits this, and when it hits that, so right now that switch for the throttle just shut off. So I'll show you how that works, but what's nice about that, like I said, I'll just demonstrate. We've got the power on this thing. Um, also got a laser light on here, so it projects a laser on the on the cant if need be. Um, this is a pulse modulator that I've got on here. What you do is you turn the power on and you can dial whatever percentage you want for speed on that thing. Um, put it in forward. Let's say I want it at 30%. Throttle on. This thing will go down and it'll make the cut. 
on its own. I can let it go. You know, I'm, I'm probably never going to cut that fast. That's that's 40% right there. That's moving along pretty good for a cut. Uh, maybe if I'm doing some pine or something or edging some boards, I might move that fast, but otherwise probably not. So when it gets to the end of this thing, it's set up again, like I said, so that these stops will catch. It'll shut down my blade because right now I could be back there stacking wood or doing whatever, drinking a beer, who knows. So you see that stop there, stops the mill from moving forward. This stop shuts that blade down so the thing isn't back here screaming now. And then when I walk up to the mill, let's see I'm stacking wood or what have you, it just finished its cut. I walk up to the mill, I turn that blade off, put it in reverse. If I want, I can crank this thing up to 100% and it comes back on its own. So moves along pretty good, like I said. Seems to work pretty slick. Uh, the parts for this, you can see how this stopper, so it shuts it down for me when it gets back here. So again, I don't need to be right here monitoring everything. So it works out pretty slick. I will try to put a list of parts in the comments below. If you have questions, let me know. But uh, I'm, I'm really excited with the way that this turned out. So it should free up a lot of my time. It should allow me to stack wood while this thing is making the cut for me. I don't have to follow it down. I like that uh, that safety brake on there. I used to, this used to be my parking brake and I would, it's just a slotted piece of wood and I would drop it in here like this and that would keep my mill from moving ahead at all if the wind caught it. I don't have to do that now. There's enough resistance that it should stay put, but overnight, like I said, I'll throw this brake on here and that thing isn't going anywhere like that, so. Any questions, let me know. Like I said, I'll, I'll post a list of parts, and uh, happy milling.